The Robert E. Lee Monument in Richmond, Virginia was the first installation on Monument Avenue in 1890 and would ultimately be the last Confederate monument removed from the site in 2021. 131 years ago, however, on May the 29th, 1890, Richmond, Virginia was shut down as 50,000 residents mingled with an estimated 50,000 visitors to witness the unveiling of the Robert E. Lee Monument. The monument was placed beside a tobacco field owned by William C. Allen on the western outskirts of town, and while it was certainly the most eagerly anticipated memorial to the Confederacy's leaders, it was not the first. Richmond's original memorial was a 90-foot high stone pyramid in Hollywood Cemetery dedicated in November 1869, and in October 1875, several English donors funded a Stonewall Jackson monument at Capitol Square. Since General Lee was firmly opposed to placing statues to Confederate leaders, fundraising for his memorial did not begin until after his death in October 1870. At that time, a group of women from Richmond formed the Ladies Lee Monument Association and began soliciting churches, not just in Richmond, but all over the South for donations to build the monument. At the same time, Lieutenant General Jubal Early organized the Soldiers Lee Monument Association and in 1874 held a competitive exhibition of scale models to which the ladies and their much needed funds were invited. None of the models, however, were worthy of the object and were so rejected. During Reconstruction, fundraising was all but non-existent. Therefore, on March the 20th, 1877, the ladies turned a huge sum of $14,993, the equivalent of $493,119 in modern currency, over to the governor, treasurer, and auditor of Virginia for safekeeping. Later that year, when the monument was becoming a reality, the Ladies Association again solicited proposals for a design and offered a $2,000 first prize to the winner. This would be well over $65,000 in today's money. With the submissions displayed in a giant hall in Washington, D.C., the awards committee awarded first and second prize to Mr. Nehaus of Ohio and Mr. Ezekiel of Richmond. Hidden in amongst the submissions, however, was another work by a French sculptor named Jean-Antoine Merci that, while showing a misconception of General Lee's character, was considered to be a work of genius. Born on October 30th, 1845, in Toulouse, France, Antoine Marcy was an artist and sculptor who was known for his works in France before his Robert E. Lee Memorial earned him a reputation in the United States. Ultimately, models provided to Marcy led to a final contract with a board of managers led by Governor Fitzhugh Lee, approving the final design. Although famous for his works in Paris, Merci devoted particular attention to the construction of the Robert E. Lee Monument, utilizing equipment and uniforms owned by Lee himself. The monument was constructed in France and shipped to America in four separate shipping crates. The site for the statue was originally offered in 1886. The city of Richmond annexed the land in 1892, but economic difficulties meant that the Lee Monument stood alone for several years in the middle of a tobacco field before the development resumed in the early 1900s. The cornerstone of the massive pedestal designed by Peugeot, a French architect, was laid in October of 1887. Hidden within the pedestal is said to be a copper time capsule containing newspapers, Confederate money, a muster roll of Virginia sharpshooters, and numerous other memorabilia items from the Civil War including some 60 items from families and businesses surrounding Richmond. The exterior bronze nameplate upon the pedestal said only Lee. On May the 4th, 1890, the cast statue of General Lee arrived in five pieces at the Elba train station having traveled by way of Paris, France to New Jersey and then on to Broad Street in Richmond. According to a report in the May 8th, 1890 Richmond Dispatch, over 300 feet of rope was attached to the wagons carrying the pieces, and over 10,000 people showed up to pull the pieces to the pedestal while lively strains of Dixie roused them to a fever pitch. Upon arrival, 
the ropes were cut up into small pieces and distributed for mementos of the occasion. Three days and nights of torrential rain failed to dampen the enthusiasm of Richmonders, and as the big day approached, the anticipation of the event became nothing short of fanatical. The entire city was draped in Confederate flags and rebel decorations. Veterans, soldiers, and citizens from every southern state gathered to fervently honor their unrivaled hero, and every hotel and rooming house in the city was packed past capacity. The parade, which started at noon, was a full four miles in length with an estimated 100 to 150,000 in attendance. At the draped monument, with mud slopping over shoe tops, General Jubal Early introduced Colonel Archer Anderson, who delivered a rambling oration that began, A people carves its own in the monuments of its great men. Two of Lee's daughters, Mary Custis Lee and Mildred Child Lee, were also in attendance at the dedication. At the conclusion, General Joseph E. Johnston pulled a rope and dropped the veil. A great cheer rose from thousands of throats, gushed writer A. Christian Asbury. Cannons boomed and muskets roared while many of the old soldiers wept as they looked upon their honored and beloved commander sitting upon his horse traveler. In the years following the installation, several other contemporary statues were erected along Monument Avenue, including the Stonewall Jackson Monument, the Jefferson Davis Monument, the Jeb Stewart Monument, and the Matthew Fontaine Monument. In December of 2006, the state completed an extensive cleaning and repair of the monument. It was then listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2007, the Virginia Landmarks Register in 2006, and was located within the Monument Avenue Historic District, an area that should have provided protection for these monuments. On June 4, 2020, however, Virginia Governor Ralph Northam announced that the Richmond statue of Lee would be removed, and after a protracted court battle along with a ruling by the state Supreme Court, the Commonwealth of Virginia approved the removal of the statue, which was in turn removed on September 8, 2021, bringing the history of Monument Avenue to a close. Period pictures and historical accounts of these statues have been all but eliminated from the internet, and if not preserved by historians, will soon be erased forever. If you enjoyed today's video and would like to see more content like this, be sure to take a shot at the like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest bird dog content. And if you'd like to support the channel, for a limited time there's exclusive Civil War Diaries merchandise available in the video link below.